Hello. Welcome to this presentation on assessment at Key Stage 3 at Charlton High School. This presentation is aimed at both students and parents and will help you understand the way that we assess and report in years 7, 8 and 9. My name is Mr Dawson. I am one of the Deputy Head Teachers here at CHS and part of my role is working to improve the curriculum and the assessment of the curriculum. At Key Stage 3, we are changing the way that we do things. These changes are mainly to do with how we assess and what we report home to parents. We have replaced our old system, which was based on reporting progress of students. We believe our new system is much better as it focuses on judging how well a student knows the curriculum in each subject. We are looking in detail at how the student is performing in key concepts in each subject and more on this later. So to start us off, we have a question. What exactly is a curriculum? So a curriculum is made up of all the knowledge, skills and experiences that students will learn and be able to do across each of their subjects. At Charlton High School, this is represented as a five year learning journey across each subject. Our aim is for students to become knowledge rich and move from novice to expert in each subject. In other words, it is everything that is taught and hopefully learned in each classroom at Charlton High School. So what knowledge is in the curriculum? Knowledge is what students need to be able to be successful in their academic studies and knowledge in the curriculum can be broken down into two main types. These are called declarative knowledge and procedural knowledge. Declarative knowledge is the what, it is the facts, the concepts or the rules. Procedural knowledge is the how, it produces some kind of action, it is following the steps of a process. Procedural knowledge can also be conditional, meaning it relies on knowledge that has come before. Another way to think of things is that declarative knowledge is key ideas and procedural knowledge is using, applying and critiquing them. So what we are going to do is to ask students, teachers, about the knowledge that the students have gained in all of their subjects and ask them the question, how well have you learned the curriculum? How well have the students learned the curriculum? Therefore, this will be a judgment of how much knowledge, both declarative and procedural, students have gained over time. To do this, we are going to assign one of the five words you see here to each student in each subject. These words are emerging, developing, secure, extending and exceptional. The words and what they mean will be slightly different in each subject as the knowledge and skills needed for each subject differ. I'll now go into more detail on what each of the words mean in general terms. The first word to look at is emerging. A student working at this level has some knowledge and an emerging understanding of key concepts in the curriculum. An emerging student will find that learning is a challenge and that the subject content is difficult most of the time. They need to focus on practicing and learning key concepts so they can move to the next stage, which is developing. A student working at this level is developing their knowledge as outlined in the curriculum. They are developing the understanding of the key concepts. However, they're not yet secure in these. A student here will find lessons hard sometimes, but will be able to grasp many, but probably not all of the key concepts. They will make mistakes, but this is all part of the learning journey as they try to get their knowledge to be secure. And a student working at this level is secure in their knowledge. They have mastered key concepts and would get things right the majority of the time. All students should be aiming for their knowledge to be at least secure as this will mean they are on target in their key stage three studies to have a solid foundation of knowledge at the start of their GCSE studies in year 10. If their knowledge remains secure in years 10 and year 11, they will be looking at gaining grade fives and access to many of the courses that they want to study at college. A student who would like to specialize in a certain area should be aiming for their knowledge to be more than secure and extending. So a student working at this level is very secure in their knowledge. They are demonstrating that they have a greater depth of understanding and can apply and manipulate knowledge in key concepts. Students at this level 
often find that they are easily able to recall their knowledge and they learn things relatively easily, especially new things. They are accurate almost all of the time and are often reaching the extension activities in class. If a student maintains their knowledge at this level, they should be looking at studying the subject perhaps beyond year 11, as they are capable of very high grades indeed. If a student's level is even beyond this level, the student's knowledge will be deemed as exceptional. And a student working at this level is excelling in a level that is exceptional. They display excellent knowledge, application, and the interplay of the key concepts that together demonstrate an academic flair for the subject. Students at this level are incredibly able in a certain discipline and are always quick and always accurate. This is a level that will only be reached by one to 2% of our student population. And students at this level should be looking at targeting grade nines, which is the highest grade in their year 11 studies. So what happens over time? A student moves Student, sorry, as students move through Key Stage 3, the curriculum will also change as it gets broader and more challenging. And our aim is for all students to be at least secure in their knowledge in all subjects. Our teachers work really hard to deliver lessons that enable students to have this knowledge. And they also work tirelessly to support students who will have emerging or developing knowledge. Students who reach extending will be those who put in the extra work often outside the classroom in their home learning and home study, as we know that hard work and focused revision often pays off. So how do we make our judgments? Each subject area in every year group will have their own criteria for the five words that we are using to assess the student's knowledge. These will be sent home with any reports to parents, and I'll give you an example in a moment. Teachers will use a variety of evidence to judge where a student's knowledge is up to. They will use a number of factors that are listed here. And one of our large pieces of evidence of a student's performance are our progress tests that take place in the spring one half term and the summer two half terms. However, we understand that there's more to a student's knowledge than just replicating it on a test. And we take a balanced view of test performance together with the student's ability to communicate their ideas and thoughts through work produced in class and at home or question answers and conversations had with students in class. Students will get their key stage three report in the spring two and summer two half terms and they will look similar to the example shown here. We have a new system for reporting and this is not yet set up so we are aiming to send something that looks roughly like what you can see here. There are three main parts to reading the table. The first is to look at the curriculum statement for each subject. And the other two pieces of information are the effort grades, one for effort in class and the other for effort at home. I will revisit this table later, but I want to spend a little while giving you an example of how to look at the curriculum statements and how to use the effort grades effectively. And of course, there will be more subjects than just these few that I'm showing here. So here's an example of what you may get from each subject. This information, as I said earlier, will be sent home with the reports and will also be available to view on the school website. This is year seven and it is food and nutrition, food technology. In red here, this is what has been taught over the course of year seven in food. It's broken down into knowledge and skills. Below, you'll see a number of statements that detail what the knowledge judgments look like. I have highlighted this secure knowledge in a yellow box to show what it means to be secure in food in year seven. What you will see when you look at these sentences is that the more independent the student is, the further right their judgment will be. Class teachers will also help the students understand how to move their knowledge from developing to secure or from secure to extending. They will revisit knowledge toolkits used in most lessons. They will refer to personalised learning checklists that are used in many areas after progress tests to identify a student's individual strengths or areas to concentrate on. And they may direct some specific areas for home learning. Accompanying the curriculum statements, as I mentioned earlier, would be effort. And here is our effort grid. 
This details what we deem to be the skills and traits demonstrated by our students that will enable them to be CHS scholars. This grid again is on our website in the assessment and reporting area, so you can look at it in more detail than should you wish. Effort grades go from four, which is poor effort, to three, which is where effort requires improvement, to two, which we deem as good effort, to one, which is excellent effort. The top eight rows are to do with effort in the classroom, and the bottom three rows that are shaded slightly darker are to do for effort in home learning. These effort descriptors are a group of learning and organisational behaviours that will lead to students being a success. And many of these behaviours are things that our students do on a daily basis and have been doing for many, many years. Excellent effort in the blue column is attainable for the majority of students in all they do. For example, they need to arrive promptly and fully equipped to every lesson. They need to show the right focus in lessons by sitting up straight, tracking the teacher, asking and answering questions and showing respect to others. Student books should be exceptional, with new vocabulary written down and defined and work presented so that the book can almost be used as a revision aid. Excellent effort by a student is also demonstrated, demonstrating listening skills, working collaboratively as a team and responding well to feedback. Excellent effort in home learning is similar, but applying these same skills to work completed at home and of course handing work in on time. The reason that I talk in detail about effort is that it's something that we are working on all the time in school. Form tutors and the year teams regularly revisit aspects of, of effort and we'll go into great detail in one area at once, helping the student to understand just what is expected of them in all lessons. Teachers also reinforce the learning behaviours so they become habits and the students will do them without thinking. And in my opinion, they are the most important part of the report because there are clear things that we can do in order to help students improve. So let's go back to the example report that I showed earlier. This student has clearly done well in most subjects and has a talent for drama with the effort grades and the curriculum statement of extending. But the student hasn't done so well in science or maths. Could this be that effort in class is not as good as it could be? The student here can put the effort into other subjects, so what's going on? I would certainly have a conversation with the, with the child. Firstly, I would talk about the effort and get the students to think about what they are trying in their subjects that they're doing well in. And are they applying the same effort, the same behaviours, the same habits to their maths and science? Or perhaps maybe the student hasn't grasped some of the concepts in maths and science. So it would be worth to look back at the curricula in these subjects and look at the breakdown of what's been taught and whether the student has grasped it. This will also be supported by the class teacher. So the report here help guide the support for the student learning. Some students may see these um, curriculum statements in their effort and be able to work independently on improvement in a few of their areas. Some students may require some support from parents, from teachers or form tutors. All of this is absolutely okay. It's part of the learning process to get the students at Key Stage 3 ready for further subject studies at Key Stage 4. If you would like to know more, please visit the assessment and reporting section of the school website where all this information will eventually be stored. At the moment it's under construction, but there'll be much more information on there early to mid-January. That's all from me for the time being. Can I thank you for your time listening to this presentation and of course for your continuing support of all of our students. Goodbye.